All right, everybody. So this is probably one of my most requested video topics is formula driven materials. And I've done some overview videos in the past on this that I'll link here as well. My last video in the Microvel Made Easy series was about regular materials. <clears throat> and I told you guys that I was going to do another video specifically on formula driven materials. So that's what I want to cover today. And I want to do just a high level overview and I'll probably do more videos where I drill further and further into this. Um, but today I want to show you how you, what they are, how you create formula driven materials, what is the purpose of them and the scenarios you might use them and then the couple best practices. And I'll also link Microvellum's article on this in their knowledge network. I'm not going to go in too much detail because using this as a reference is going to be really helpful always reference back this and they walk through the anatomy formula materials all of the different fields you can formulate and even the columns <clears throat> in the workbook what they refer to i'm not going to spend too much time on that but what i will show you guys if i go and apologize i i'm traveling you see i'm in a hotel room right now and a little bit of a cold but we're going to push through this for you guys if i go to my material file and i'm just in a project here and you'll see that there in my library, there are some materials here that are formulated. And the first thing you'll notice is that there's the alias, which is supposed to be in, in parentheses at the beginning. So you see where it says sheet material nine or up here, glass material, and then you put the material name. And so if I just right click up here, I'm going to go to the project level, but I'm going to add formula material. So there's two options, add material, add formula material. So you technically can put formulas in a regular material, but you want to do the add formula material because it gives you a different in interface that allows you to edit the formulas here in the interface. But also these materials are different in the database. Microvelm specifically created a new type of material called formula materials, and they store the formula itself in the database, not just in the spreadsheet, it's in the database. And that's very important for these to be able to be working for you future proof. So the first thing is you've got a material alias name and then you've got a material name. So that's what's unique about this is they give you an alias name, which is stored in the workbook and in the database. And that alias, is, think of that as like the generic name. And so it's important if you are going to set these up in your library that you think about your formula materials and coming up with an alias name that allows that to always be a unique lookup variable if needed, lookup value. For example, if I'm going to do <clears throat> door material, I my alias name could be door material, but the formula name, the material name itself is going to evaluate to what that material is. I will always have that alias name both here and in my workbook to reference no matter how the material name formulates to evaluate. So you notice here, this is gray, the edit formula. There is no formula for the alias. It is just a static value. So you want that to be a generic name that's just always what you refer that by. So door material is a good example. You might say open back material or con 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 concealed back material. You might say bulkhead or finished end material, whatever, something that is generic. And think of your alias, like a pointer name. If you think of it like your pointer, this material is always going to be assigned to that pointer. It's always that generic material, what we refer to. Then you have the ability to do a formula. So I can literally come in here. I can find name values. I can formulate this. And just real quick, going to run through the alias. You can formulate virtually everything in here. So I can formulate my thickness. I have this code field. I have all of these values I can formulate even formulate your sheet sizes. You have extended data, you've got the grain, you can formulate this. Now talking about this, why might I use formula materials instead of my regular materials? In the last video, we talked about how with regular materials, there's some limitations, kind of the way Microvellum is intended to use more historically is you use something called find or replace. So I can have all these materials that are, for example, <clears throat> template level or library level. So that's why I see they're green or these blue ones would be clonable. 
But if I have library levels and I, I can only find and replace and edit the name, but I can't change things like the thickness, I can't edit anything else about this unless I copy it to my project level. So formula driven materials though, either way, if in this case I have to come here to the material interface, I have to right click, I have to find and replace. There's just a lot of limitations on this. With formula materials, I can formulate the name as well as the thickness, as well as any attribute about this material. I can push it to look to, for example, my globals or my project wizard. <clears throat> so I now can edit all the attributes of my library level template materials without having to clone them or copy them to my project wizard. Um, so if you think of your, how you have a database where you have a lot of users, you have a lot of projects. If you imagine <clears throat> if you are having to clone materials or create every project, you end up with a lot of materials in your database. Additionally, it can be very confusing for your everyday users to figure out how to use them and edit things. So setting up your form materials can allow you to streamline your workflow and you can set it up to where your users don't even ever have to come into the material interface at all. So for example, let me just run through a quick scenario of this. I'm going to, need to create some prompts in my project wizard. I'll just do this as an example, guys. So let's say that I want, <clears throat> and Microvellum has a lot of things set up for this, but I'm just going to start from scratch, assuming we don't know, I don't know what library we're watching this might be in. So let's say that what would you normally go through and set up is you've got your face, your exterior finish, your interior finish. So I remember the first time I used forming materials, I got, I was so tired of constantly having to find and replace all my white melamine, all my white interiors with black. And those were our two common interior colors. And I was like, I just want a single checkbox or a single radio button in my wizard where I can say, are my interiors white or are they black? That was the start of it. And then from there it built into, oh, I can formulate everything. So let's say I had a prompt in my project wizard for interior finish. And I could define this as a, I'm sorry, a drop down list. So let's make it a type five prompt. And by default, white. But over here, I can define my list. Let's say I have an option of white, black, or even all. I'm going to define that. I arrange list interior finish. Okay. Ooh. I already have a interior finish here. I define this. Okay. Now let's say exterior finish. And this could be PL1, for example. And I'm just going to make that a text box, actually. <laughs> I guess use your imagination how you can leverage this. But so I've got interior finish, exterior finish. I've got core. So I need to define my core so I can actually choose, um, let's say, particle board. By default, I want this to be a drop down list as well. So I'm going to make MDF, particle board, plywood as my options, right? <laughs> Can you imagine you probably are going to need to define this for more than just one specific background. You might need a core for your doors, a core for your carcasses, things like that. I'm just going to keep it simple here. And then let's just say this. And by default, this is already the metric, so I'll just say 15. But you imagine if you were really building a spec group, you might have your door thickness, you might have multiple thicknesses. I've made those four prompts now in my wizard, and just to show you, if I go to my wizard, so I've got interior finish with those options I chose here. I've got exterior finish as a text box, I've got core. And I've got my thickness as a text box. So now if I go into my material file, 
let's make a material that uses those. So I'm going to go add formula material. I'm going to call this door material for my alias. And I'm going to make a formula. So here's where you can basically concatenate whatever you want for your material name. So I'm going to do equals W because I defined that in my W workbook. And actually, I could even go, I think, to name. You know what? They don't have a wizard here, but so I know it's in my wizard. So I'm going to do W thickness. And so I'm going to concatenate together here. I'm going to use underscore. Exterior, or actually W, exterior finish, and core, and interior finish. Something got to find wrong. All right. So I've created a material name, my thickness and my exterior and my core and my interior. Okay. You might flip these. Actually, if this was going to be face down, maybe I would put my interior finish first, which is easy. Just change this. But you can start to see how easy it is to create this. One best practice when you're doing this in the M workbook, if for some reason I get an error with this, maybe I get this material and it's in a spec group that's defined without these prompts in it, whatever reason. If there's an error in your M workbook in the material names, you're going to have errors with any materials that are below that. So it's always best practice to wrap everything in an if error just so that it evaluates to something. So if there's an error with this, then I'm just going to say a door material. I'm just going to use the alias name. So at the very least, it's going to value me. And now I can go to thickness, and I can look at the thickness variable there as well for my thickness. <clears throat> so you can start to see how you can very quickly and easily start to define prompts in your Project Wizard, for example, that control things here. <clears throat> so I'm going to... Okay, now I've got that that material here. And just to show you guys, I'm going to go back to my wizard and let's make some changes. So I'm going to change, I want black interiors and I want this to be PL2 and I want it to be MDF core. And I want it to be 19.5. Okay. Now let's go back to our material file and you'll see this updated. So you could imagine if you have a ton of these and you have these defined for all your materials, you have them pre-assigned over here. So I can still assign this to pointers all the same. So I could push this over to my Mador material. And I don't even have to come here. Once I have these assigned to my pointers and I have the logic set up, I could have all my materials formulated to have the exterior color, the interior, the different thicknesses. And I can just go through my wizard and populate things. So this gives you a structure to for definitely lower the barrier of entry for newer users to your library. They can go through a single interface like the Project Wizard, which uh, takes them through the specific prompts that they need to fill out or make selections for your library to work. And you can really speed up the setup of your spec groups by setting things up this way. So let me know in the comments any questions you have about this or what you might use it for yourself. I'd love to hear what ideas maybe this sparked for you. And I will definitely do some more videos on this going a little bit more in depth. So please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what else you'd like to know about formula materials.